In this video, I want to show you how I approach a poured video. First of all, I look for an image that is has got more dark in it than light because I'm going to mask out the light parts and I'm going to pour around that. So I don't want to use, I don't want to put masking on all of the, I'm going to use this stuff that you, I usually use the Papio drawing gum, um, but I don't want to mask any more of the paper than I have to. So I get my image and then I posturize it in my uh, graphic uh, design program. I don't use Photoshop, I use Corel Paint Shop Pro. Whatever you use, you posterize it and what that does for you is it gets you down into a, well, first of all, you do a grayscale, then you posterize it. It gets you down to a uh, number of values. So all you're looking at is changes in values. You're not dealing with color at all. So here we basically have three values. We have darkest dark, which would be black, a nine. We have lightest light, which is a white. And then we have this medium color in between. That's my midtone. And those so I'm down to my last line and I've been using my number two um, shaper. I think these are called shaper, color shapers. And I can use the edge of it to make a nice point and make a nice line here. And don't worry about those extra pencil lines because they will come off when you remove the miskit, when you remove the masking fluid. So I'm not real worried about them right now. I'm just trying to make this work for the picture. And I'm just about done here. And now I'm going to let it dry. Those are the light and the mid-tones that have all been masked. Very light. And the rest of the piece I'm gonna pour. I'm gonna pour it with watercolors. This is Antwerp Blue. I'm gonna shake it up. Oops, that's black. I'm not gonna use that first. This is Quinacridone Gold. I'm gonna shake that up. And we're all distributed. And this is quinacridone rose. They're all transparent watercolors. And I am going to pour them on this painting. The first thing I'm gonna do is get some papers ready. And the way I do that is rather than waste a nice big old sheet of paper towel, I'm gonna to get little teeny bits and I'll show you later what I'm gonna do with them. It's gonna help me control the water because as we know with watercolor, Controlling the water is what it's all about. So these little sheets are going to help me. I've got all my little pad of sheets here ready to go. I'm going to start with my quinacridone gold. Then I'm going to pour the quinacridone rose. Then I'm going to do the Antwerp blue. And I'm going to do it in stripes. I like to kind of do it diagonally. Um, some paintings want to have it more horizontal or vertical, it's up to you. It's completely up to you. You want some of the colors to be the pure watercolor, the pure yellow. Ring. Notice they're all three primaries, right? A yellow, red, and blue. So some of it you're going to want to be pure color, and some of it you're going to want to be blended. So you're going to want to have green and purple and red and yellow and blue and orange. <clears throat> what I have here is just what it looks like. It's a pet pee pad, and it's a very good surface to pour on. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I've used this for two months now, and I just keep drying it out and letting it go. All right, so the first thing we do is we get our paper nice and wet. Now, some people prefer to paint, to do pours on um, Single sheets, it's easier to manipulate the paper and bend it and get the color to go where you want, but I just, I have an affinity for these blocks, so I continue to use blocks. Now you wanna get this nice and saturated. Where the water goes, the paint will go, as you know from other paintings we've done. So you want the water to cover the painting so that the paint will cover the painting as well. All right, now I'm gonna start with my gold. And because this is a relatively small 
piece of paper. It's a nine by 12. I'm gonna use a pipette rather than waste a lot of paint. So I have a little pipette here and I'm going to get some color in here and I want it to go diagonally and I want it largely, although not exclusively, but I want it to focus on my center of interest. I'm gonna clean that out right away so you don't have or, or yellow mixing with your other colors if you if I was to use the pipette on there. Then we're gonna swirl it around a little bit. You can use the paintbrush on this early stage to make sure that the paint goes into these little edges, the little um, everywhere. You want it, you want it to be you want it to go everywhere. Not everywhere. You want it to um, cover the paper fairly well, and then you're going to let it drain off the edge. You want to have a place to hold your painting so you don't stick your fingers in the paint. So that's one of the reasons I tape here. Now I'm going to use these little pieces I tore off and just make sure I don't have any puddles that will end up bleeding back in and messing up my subsequent pores. All right. Let's see, that's pretty good. Okay, for now I'm done with the quinacridone gold. can use your fingers to get it into the little spaces. And then, again, you can roll it off the edge. And get some of the little cleaner uppers. Oh, the wind's whipping up out there. Don't want to have any puddles, so you want to just let the water, let the capillary action pull the paint up into the towel. And where else do we have a little residue? All right, so there's our pink, our red. Done with that, and now we're going to do the transport glue. And this can get pretty dark. Again, I'm going to use the pipette. spot so I'm gonna make sure that I come down and fill up that corner over there. And again I'm gonna to try to go for that same corner that I've been pulling the rest of it off. I think that's good. Now we're going to let that dry and we'll come back and remove the masking fluid when it's completely dry. Now that the first pour is dry, the colors are looking a little dull to me. 
So I want to brighten them up a bit. What I'm going to do now is I am going to blow, actually blow with a mouth mister. Um, I think that's what it's called. I'm going to blow the paint onto certain areas of the painting just to make it a little more dense, a little darker. So what you do, this is, this is, um, you can use this to make nice, little blasts of color, little shots of color, especially with watercolor. It helps intensify the colors that you've already used. So let's get started. I'm going to start with my, um, my ice cream, coffee, chocolate chip, my favorite. Anyway, um, this is my quinacridone gold and I've shaken it up. I shouldn't open it over the painting. Not a good thought. So I'm gonna stick the long end of this little mouth atomizer, I think is the technical name, in here. This part, the wide part, and the long skinny part should be at a right angle. And the skinny part should extend halfway over the hole of the mister, of the wide end. This is where you put your mouth. So I'm going to do the I'm gonna intensify the gold all along this middle section. We'll see how well I do. You tilt the jar toward you and then blow. did it all the way up and through here. All right, that's good. I think I'm not gonna do a little bit, another blow there. All right, now quickly get it in the water so that the, the little stem doesn't build up. Put the top back on my quinacridone gold. I'm going to move to my rose. The blue is in a big bottle, so it, and my little tube doesn't reach all the way down. So, oh, don't be doing that. So I also had to pour it into a little cup. I'm trying to get all the pink out of my tube here. I got my pipe cleaner, or no, it's not a pipe cleaner, my little um, paper clip, extendo paper clip cleaner. Let's see what that'll do. Let's pull out whatever's remaining of the color. And I will get the blue up in the corners, hopefully. And on the cat.
So, looking pretty ugly. Now it's time to remove the masking foot. See what we've got in values on this piece. Tone them down, paint over them. And as I started out telling you, this is a limited palette exercise. I have three colors, quinacridone gold, quinacridone rose, or permanent rose, I can't remember now, and Antwerp blue. So I have put those colors on a little bitty watercolor palette. There's my red, yellow, blue, my triad, right? There's also black because this, this is a very dark kind of, uh, the only way to get another value darker than what's on here is to use black. So I'm using lamp black, which is considered by the um, um, National Watercolor Society uh, as, a, as a transparent watercolors paint. So it's valid for, I consider it valid. So anyway, there are my colors. <clears throat> and the idea is now, what do I do next? Um, I think what I want to do <clears throat> in the window is make the window kind of a gold. So I'm going to make it kind of a light yellow. Get it a little wet. Get some more yellow on there. And well, we're just assuming the cat's looking out the window because there's something interesting out there. I have cats. It's likely going to be a bird or a squirrel. Now I could make a, put a yellow together, put the yellow and the pink together and make an orange and make that an orange out there. I don't think I want to do that. But you know what I might be able to do? Is drop in some pink in a couple places and see what happens. Not sure exactly what I want to do with black. In one, I did the cat black. Um, I 
don't like down here. I got I, I didn't exactly get rid of those bleeds. So I wonder if I should just make it black. If you keep your edge wet, it'll blend. Imagine that's the edge of a desk. Don't know what that is. This is the edge of the desk. Because let's face it, cats always like to do work. Remember, just like highlights aren't everywhere, and there are lowlights. So you need to place them where you want them. It's 4th of July, folks, so fireworks will be going off. I'm 
same thing up here. The, the paint will go where the water is. The water will draw it in. I didn't put water on these colored areas, right? It's not going to go there unless I actually put the brush there. So I can go, I don't have to paint, I don't have to be as careful in other words. So. Basically lazy, so. Thing you can do, remember, you're the artist. You can take your black, so there's a little bleed there, right? So, what if I have a window jam there? What if this? up here I've got a buckle here and it's making my brush go wonky so if I want that, maybe I want to have a little division here. It tells me where the bottom of the lines are. Maybe there's a shadow there. I think I want a few more details in here to set off the kitty a little bit. That's the bottom of the window, so on that side. Where's the cat's tail? Does the cat's tail go up there? Or does the cat's tail come down here? I think this is the cat's shadow. So maybe that should be black.
No, don't do the cat black. If I don't do the cat black, this takes center stage. And I think the cat is really what needs to take center stage. So here goes. So I think that's about all I'm going to do, except, you know what, I want to close this side off somewhat because I got that one closed. Let's see, how am I going to do it? I think I'm going to run a line of water up there. and diffuse because I don't want it to draw any attention. And that closes it off. I'm a little good by that.
you know when I got the same problem with it? Well, 